dear students today onwards i would like to conduct the classes through these small videos and i will forward these videos to you i request you to kindly go through these videos and try to learn by yourself by taking the notes in your hand and today i will try to start the next module that is the fifth module electrical conductivity in metals first we'll try to understand what is electrical conductivity generally every materials are been divided into three categories the first category is what we call as the conductor we are all aware a conductor is one which allows the charges to pass through they allow the charges to pass through from one corner to the other corner like the example of copper or silver or maybe gold or aluminum all such kind of metals you know they are all conductors the second kind of materials are what we call as the insulators and insulators are the one which do not allow the charges to pass through they do not allow the you know charges to pass through like wood plastic paper etc and in between the two there is one more kind of material that is called as a semiconductor we are all aware about it and the one semiconductor which conducts the charges based on the temperature it is purely temperature dependent material now today we require to understand how the conductivity is going to take place in the case of a conductor and there are two approaches one is a classical approach and that classical approach is what we call as a classical free electron theory this is what is called as a classical free electron theory and this theory was explained by the two scientists one is drude and one more is lorentz together and this is what we call as a drude lorentz theory now let us try to understand what is this drude lorentz theory is going to explain to us now to understand the drude's lorentz theory let us try to consider an atom i will try to take an atom we are aware that atom has a central nucleus there is a nucleus where there are protons and neutrons are going to be present and there are large number of orbits according to the bohr theory there are infinite number of orbits are going to be around so many number of orbits are there around the given nucleus and in each orbit there are electrons there are electrons that are going to be present so these are the various kind of orbits and the number of electrons in each orbit is been given by a relation 2n square where n is what we call as a principal quantum number when i try to take n is equal to 1 it is going to take two electrons in the first orbit in the second orbit when i say n is equal to 2 square is into 2 which is the thing about 8 electrons in the third orbit 18 electrons in the fourth orbit 32 electrons so like that you know number of electrons are been filled in the various orbits so let us consider this atom i will try to give an example of an atom called copper we are aware copper has got 29 electrons so how these electrons are been distributed in the copper so in the case of uh, copper in the first orbit there are two electrons are been filled two electrons are been filled in the second orbit there are eight electrons are been filled and the third orbit there are 18 number of electrons are been filled altogether 28 number of electrons over but in the fourth orbit i can have 32 electrons but there is only one electron going to be present hence this electron is what we call as the free electron or also called as the valence electron it is also called as a valence electron so copper has got one valence electron and the conductivity in metals is only based on the free electron that are going to be present in the material it is not because of any other conductivity it is only because of the free electron that are going to be present in the material therefore one atom in a copper is going to contribute one electron so if there are n number of atoms are there there are n number of electrons are going to be present now what drude theory tells about the conductivity in metals now in the case of drude theory he says we have a single atom where there is a nucleus and there is only one free electron i will represent only that orbit where other orbits that i am not going to represent 
if one more atom is been brought closer then the energy level of that atom and the other atom is going to overlap so that now this electron can easily travel from one atom to the other atom when you try to bring large number of atoms all these energy levels are going to overlap one next to the other one over the other and that is how every one atom has got a free electron and this electron is going to be free to move from one corner to the other corner and this movement of these electrons is what is been represented as called drifting this is what is been represented as a drifting therefore there is a drifting of electron that is going to take place from one corner to the other corner now you see this electron can easily move from here to here so there is a net drift velocity that is going to take place and which i represent by vd but there are also equal number of electrons are going to drift in the opposite direction or there may be number of electrons drifting in the downward direction or in the upward direction hence in a metal in the absence of an electric field in the absence of an electric field the net drift velocity is going to be equal to zero therefore a conductor has got no current there is no current going to be present in it but imagine this conductor is being applied by an electric field externally you try to apply an external electric field here what is an electric field an electric field which always creates a difference in the potential between the two terminals it raises the potential at this and it decreases the potential on the other side naturally there exists a difference in the potential and due to which the electrons are trying to drift in a direction opposite to the direction of the electric field because the electric field direction is this this is the direction of the electric field but electrons are trying to drift in the opposite way because there is a force that has been acting due to the potential that exists between the two conductors now how much is the drift velocity in your second pu you might have learned you can just make a reference of it the amount of drift velocity each electron is going to have is proportional to the amount of electric field that is being created between the two ends of a conductor it depends on the charge that is the electronic charge it depends on one more factor called tau that is called relaxation time it is a time taken between the two successive collision and depends on the mass therefore this is what the equation represented the drift velocity of an electron when you try to apply the electric field and here clearly says that only in the presence of an electric field there is a drifting that is going to take place now this drifting is going to take place and due to this drifting naturally there is a current that has been acted between the two ends of a conductor now how much is the current that depends on the current depends on the number of electrons present per unit volume of the material you know n is a number of electrons per unit volume you try to take one unit volume how many number of electrons are going to be present okay it depends on the area of cross section of a given conductor you know whenever we speak about a conductor the conductor has got a certain cross sectional area so it depends on the cross section area it depends on the charge of the electron and it depends on the drift velocity now this is what exactly the equation for the current that is present in a given conductor in the presence of this external electric field and due to which i can say a given conductor has some kind of conductivity by taking the two relations if you join this nae vd and vd you try to replace by this equation and try to bring it which you already learnt you are able to get the equation is equal to ne square into tau divided by m and this is what exactly the expression that you have learnt where this is the amount of conductivity of electron that is going to take place therefore conductivity of a conductor depends on the number of electrons therefore i can say sigma is a proportional to n and sigma is directly proportional to the tau which is nothing but it is a material property however the charge of an electron and the mass of an electron is always a constant now this is what you try to understand based based on the classical concept okay now whether this is going to explain us that the conductivity only depends on the number of electrons or depends on only the relaxation time if that is a case okay whether the classical free electron theory is able to explain all the fundamental concepts okay so that is what we require to understand but however we come to know that the classical free electron theory or what is called as a drude theory is failed to explain certain concepts so let us try to see what are exactly the failures of this classical free electron theory so i'll try to give the failures in the coming class in the next class